another episode of the Kim Congdon Takeover. It's me, Kim Congdon, with another week. What's up, Mark? What's up? How are you? Feeling good. I'm feeling good. We're, we're, we're three episodes in? This will be... So be four. Oh, no, one, four five. One, two, three, four, five. This is episode five, I think. Six. Episode six? So you did two in New York. Now you're back in LA. Oh, shit. I've been traveling a lot. I I have been going around and I feel like I want to petition to add just like three more hours into the day. Yeah. Three hours. Three hours would make such a huge difference Oof. in my life. Three extras. Oh, sue me for wanting to shave my armpits <laughs> and having the time. <laughs> How many hours are you sleeping? Um, I'm getting a six right now. I okay. like to have eight. I'm getting six. I can't do any less than six anymore. Yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to be a four. I, I did the last 10 years off four. Yeah, because with comedy, it's at night, right? So it's that's difficult. And then you're waking up noon plus. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's fucking, it's a nightmare. It's not good. I'm tired. Things are getting fucking crazy in the world. I'm, um, I pulled up some shit. Oh yeah. Let me send, let me, uh, pull up some shit. I, first of all, I want to talk about the, the, the lady who got kicked off. I'm telling you right now, that motherfucker is not real. That lady. <laughs> So we've all seen this video. This is nothing new. I'm not bringing up this old video as like a new video I saw. I know that we're, but um, Carrot Top was on that flight. Did you know that? No, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so he called her a lunatic. So that is not the best endorsement. If Carrot Top says you're a lunatic, you think he had props on the plane? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't. If, t if Carrot Top calls you a lunatic, it's a problem because Carrot Top looks like mashed carrots now he it looks like he's fully out he looks like kathy griffith in 10 years <laughs> is that her name kathy griffin griffin, griffin. Yep. whatever whatever her fucking name is she looks like he looks like her in 10 years but the thing that i found interesting about this is this woman she has this video and you could pretty clearly see her in this video <laughs> And for me, she has a very, I'm pausing right here, she has a very specific face. She has a very specific look, a very specific vibe. Um, she has a very specific body shape. She looks, she does look like uh, the average rich white woman, but she doesn't look like everyone else. I think she looks a little different. So, so there was a new interview with her, let's see if we have her name. Do we have her name? Have they? So it says, after the video went viral and sparked thousands of memes, Gomez uh, stayed quiet. So here she Tiffany, here it is. Go Tiffany Gomez. 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 Tiffany Gomes. Moss. Whatever. What the fuck ever. So this is the video I saw of her online. Let me pull it up. And this is what she looks like in this video. And to me, she looks a little different. Are curious. She looks like a different person to me. The other girl was giving... The other girl was giving, like... This girl's giving New Jersey energy. The other <laughs> girl was not. I don't know how to explain it. I do think that they're different people. Let's see. Tiffany Gomes... Uh, AI matching. And then I see this other video where a TikToker used AI facial recognition to prove that it wasn't her. And if that's the truth... People are saying that Tiffany and the crazy airplane lady are not the same person. Well, let's ask AI. And by AI, I mean a face recognition neural network. See, people cannot recognize someone when they change their makeup, but AI can. How do I know this? Well, let's just say I've done some experiments. And look at AI pick my face out of all these bald Asian males. If you're thinking, well, that was obvious. That's not me. This is me. We'll gather up a bunch of pictures. I like that he made us racist, first <laughs> of all. First of all, this guy's bringing us into his whole thing about, he's like, oh, wrong Asian guy. You're canceled. What's he, the Chris Hansen of canceling fucking people trying to watch his videos? This guy's a little pretentious, I will say. I don't understand the whole point of the other dude in the corner just staring at the video. Mm -hmm. This is a thing that's been happening on the internet. People just stare and watch a video that's happening and then get the views off of it. I mean, this guy's quite literally doing nothing. 
Yeah, there's some kind of psychology about that of like, oh, this guy's looking at it. It's almost like when someone says something is cool, then you're like, oh, that's cool. And then more people think it's cool. Yeah, I don't know what's Maybe going that's on. Maybe the psychology behind it, but. Maybe, but well, whatever. Yeah, this, this AI stuff is real. Like the, the fact that this is what we have to look forward to or that concerning about our future. The fact that anybody, you have to question everything. Yeah, nothing is real. The crazy airplane lady. And we'll gather up a bunch of pictures of Tiffany. Let's see. We'll so they're gathering up a bunch of pictures network. of her. And we'll calculate the distance between the two people. Okay. Magic number we're looking for. He's doing Asian AI math. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but he... It's I, I believe it. <laughs> I The magic number we're looking for is 0.6. So... So in order for it to be a match, we need it to be 0.6. AI needs to match it to 0.6 for it to be the same person. So that we're going to see, he's putting it in the AI and we're going to see what it is. If the distance between the two people is less than 0.6, we'll say that's the same person. If it's greater, that's a different person. Okay. 1.06. I'm really surprised about this. When I started making this video, I was expecting the exact opposite. I mean, look at the part on her hair. Look at her eyebrows. It seems to be the same person. So I go back and I get another video of the airplane lady. What? I run it through again and now it's 1.01. .01. One thing that might affect the accuracy is the quality of the images, but a value of one is just so far away. Remember my face versus these other dudes and look at what a distance of one means. Now that I wow. have these numbers and I'm being completely honest, I don't think these are the same person. I think Tiffany Gomez made herself to look like the airplane lady and is trying to do some kind of publicity stunt. Damn. So in order for the AI to detect that it's similar faces, it had to be less than 0.6. And him, for him, even at 0.6, it was comparing him to like, um, this man's probably 40 in this video. And him, uh, him comparing it to another video of 0.6 was comparing him to like a 73-year-old man. So it's very different wow. even at 0.6. And this AI said it was 1.0. Damn, I can't believe this kind of AI is already out. Like they've been knowing that this is going to be a problem. Oh, fuck, dude. That is nuts. They could do anything with AI. What are the possibilities? What could we do with AI? We could do a whole AI pod. I don't even have to be here right now. You're not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on vacation right now, and you guys have no idea. I'm not even doing this podcast. This is not a real thing. It's not a real moment that's happening. Everything could be faked in the future at this point. Who knows? Actually, you know what? It might help with cancel culture because something could mm. come out and you go, wasn't me. Yep. That was a deep fake. Wasn't me. Why can't everyone just say that? That's the future. That's that's going. We're going to hear a lot There's of. There's not going to be any more video footage used as evidence in the future yeah. because you're not going to be able to believe unless some sort of program comes out. How do you, how do you feel about this uh, this Grammy? Um, I think it was the Drake and. The him week, him doing it? the hologram things? No, no, it's like actual, uh, so like the AI um, music. So I think it was Drake and, and The Weeknd mm -hmm. was like a, a AI collab of this this other person, this human being created an AI version of both and they did a song, right? Yeah. You've been hearing all those songs. Yeah. But now they were able to submit it for a Grammy because the person who created it was human. So the, the Grammys allowed it to happen. But like how long, because you're using their likeness, so how long until you can't even put a song out like that without going to the, going to jail or being being fined. But now it's... Well, already. now I'm thinking about it in a comedy perspective. I'm like, if someone's putting out, um, like, uh, albums, I guess, yeah. and it's AI and it's in the style of your own comedy, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I think. I, th uh, I try to... S it's really hard. Yeah, AI is going to take over and we might as well enjoy what we have now. I don't know if it's exactly going to take over. They say AI is going to take over, but maybe it already has. Well, it's got to enhance. And that's the thing I think. Like, I think it's already enhanced. Yeah, yeah. I think it's already well past where we are and they're just leaking little bits at a time. And I think it's already where it's going to be. And then it's probably we're already in a simulation. That's where I'm at. OK, so this guy was inside some sort of cave with water and this shit looks fully like a vagina mm -hmm. i mean this thing looks like he is swimming it is kind of gross there's like fluids underneath he's can you see it on your phone did you see what i yeah, sent so, you yeah 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 it got me interested in cave diving now <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is this cave is wet i don't know what's going on but it looks like we're going into the body of a woman and i can see a butthole right now in this cave this is <laughs> 
really gross. There is like it kind of looks like the water with the um with the little bits of like moss and like sticks and stuff does look like when you have a yeast infection. So I think this cave needs to get on some meds. Looks like the cave's been not peeing after sex, mm. if you know what I you mean. You have to remember. Even caves have to remember. Even caves need to pee after sex is the lesson we're learning here. But there are a lot of things that people pull up, and it kind of does look like things were big before. Yeah. Do you believe that there were giants? Giants is <clears throat> it's it's tricky because, like, where, okay, where are the bones? What if they didn't tell us about the bones? Why would they hide the giants though? What's the secret of what's, why would you hide a giant? Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, the dinosaurs were giant. Right. And they're not hiding the dinosaurs. Yeah, so what's yeah, this yeah. like secret? Why are they trying to keep the giants? The giants aren't a side bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's like beneath, like even further beneath the, like the different layers of the earth or something like that. Cause there's oh, like they're even deeper because they were so big, but yeah. the dinosaurs were big too. And we found them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if it was just different time periods or something like that, mm, he's deeper in the layer because yeah. he came first. Yeah. That could, that could have been a thing. I would have dated a giant, yeah. a big man. I get to sit in the palm of his hand. Maybe, maybe he's so big that I fit in his hand. It's like, that's like, okay, if this was big, that's a big mm. fucking bed. Yeah. But, well, I'm I getting think, in there. I'm getting in the, cre I'm getting in the creases. I'm tucking myself between his finger, his pointer and his middle, right in the little, the little comfy spot. Curl your hand up into a palm right now. Feel the spot between your pointer and your middle. That's a fucking California king. Imagine. So now women don't like men under six feet. Right. So it was like six <laughs> meters back then. Like. Yeah, no, I like my men two miles tall or nothing. Imagine the thing on mm. those men. Yeah. Th those are the ones that were probably fucking these caves. Swing it. Oh, <laughs> that's what that's what got this cave all leaky. That's what killed this cave. You got fucked by a giant to death. Yeah. I'm glad that we're breaking down the history of everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to be um, to. Build, I think I've talked about this before. I want to Kimmy Madison. I feel like I haven't had. I didn't have a great education. When I think about going, growing up in school in Florida, there's a lot of strange things going on. My core memories of school, one time the chubby kid in our class was running through the playground that was made with mulch, you know, the big old, they were like sticks, mulch, you know, mulch. He ran, he tripped, mulch straight in his ear, blood coming out, mulch to the ear, stabbed by mulch. Second core memory, I used to, go after school to this after school care until my mom picked me up after work and it was really fun. And I remember I used to play with these older girls. I was in probably third grade and they were in like fifth grade and, um, I would play house with them every day and I, they would make me their dog. <laughs> what? Yeah. They would make me their dog because they were older than me and they got to be, and they were like the family that owned the dog. They were like husband and wife and yeah, I was the yeah. dog. Were they good parents? Um, not really. They would kick me out as the dog. We'd play by this tree and they would kick me out and they'd be like, the dog has to go play in the front yard and they'd go kick me out. And I remember they had a little baby daughter and she would, they would do a sand diaper on her. Was she real or was she a dog? No, she was one of the kids at the daycare after school. She was probably another third grader. And I remember she would kick me the kid out and the dog out to the pretend front yard and I'd have to go walk around on my hands and knees barking and this bitch is making a sand diaper on herself. And meanwhile, we can't go into our parents' home. We're not, we're, we're locked out. They don't let us in. They keep up this game for a while. Oh, you can't come in. This is our home. The dog and the kid go outside. They're abusive parents before they're even parents, these oh two. God. One day, I'm minding my own business on all fours at daycare, barking away. Not doing nothing bad. Just hanging with my friend who I'm raising because her parents are not good. The teacher comes over, the day take care teacher. She goes behind the tree. She says, what the hell? I'll, 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 I'll trot over there with my friend. We go behind the tree. The two girls are making out. What? They've been making out the whole time. That's what parents do sometimes. Plot twist. <laughs> it was a lesbian secret side mission happening behind my back whole time. I think I'm playing innocent puppy and there's real sexual stuff happening behind this tree. There was adult things. I never looked at a tree the same after that. 
Those two were just making out willy nilly. And I'm over here barking up a storm trying to be let into the house. They were, you said, what grade were they in? Fifth or sixth grade. Wow. They knew. It was a coming of age story for real. And I was just the dog. <laughs> I was just, a, I was just cock blocking them. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> They were like, go away, doggy. What kind of dog were you? Um, in my head, I was always a yellow lab mm. when I was a dog when I was younger. So, so yeah, that really happened. That's another core memory of being younger. How do you feel like that's uh, affected you in your years today? Do you have a dog? I don't think it's affected me too much. I don't have a dog, but I do bark every time I see a lesbian. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I think everything's pretty good con considering what I went through. That same place, I got spiked in the face with a volleyball and knocked out. Oh my that daycare God. was rough for me. Mm. That's one of my core memories. Oh, summer camp, fourth grade. That's where I learned how to swallow pills because we were practicing with Tic Tacs. Very Florida activity. Wow. We would swallow Tic Tacs and pretend they were pills. Wow. Yeah. And we would take pills every day. Every morning before we started summer camp, we'd take our Tic Tacs and we'd take two pills before we started our day. So is there an addiction problem in the South? Maybe. A lot of good breath. But, but yeah, but the breath was fucking great. There was no morning breath on our high, sweetie. So I'm, what I'm saying is the, there wasn't a lot of focus on the schooling. I remember my teachers, multiple teachers growing up, would get massages, shoulder rubs from the students. Not normal, I don't think. My third grade teacher told me we could survive off ice cream sandwiches. Truly meant that. Or a fourth grade, maybe. Truly meant that. Said we could survive off ice cream sandwiches. I said, what about water? She said, there's water in ice cream. <laughs> Technically, not wrong. There's probably some water in milk. Is there yeah. even? Well, yeah. Did you ever make milk? Or no, you make ice cream, no, right? No, I've never made milk. <laughs> You think I came, came straight from the teat of a cow? <laughs> no, I remember in sixth grade, we would like, we made ice cream, but it was I remember ice. That. It was ice. So it was ice and milk, right? And then you put it in a bag and shook it up. Yeah, or but it wasn't the ice that was mixed with the milk. It was the ice on the, I remember this. It was milk and mm. sugar in a Ziploc bag and ice on the outside oh. to make it cold. See, I didn't pay attention. So it wasn't mixed together. I don't know if milk has water. I'll look it up. <laughs> Does milk have water? I need to find out if we can survive off an ice cream. Milk is approximately 87% water yeah. and 13% solids. As it comes from the cow, the solid portions of the milk contain 3.7% fat. So she was trying to get me fat. Milk carry. Let's see. Can you survive off ice cream? Can you survive off only ice cream sandwiches? What are the chances this is an actual answer on the internet? No. <laughs> it just says no. A quick no. The internet didn't even win. Even though some people might lose weight it, because it could be a lot less calories they're consuming normally. It's not a good idea. It's not sustainable. It's not healthy. And the person might even feel sick after. It's like, even though some of your teachers may say that you can, you actually can't. Yeah. It would not. Oh, excessive everything is bad, including extreme. It would not kill you, but eventually will cause serious harm. So that, that old saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Does yeah. it not for ice cream sandwiches? Yeah. I mean, it's looking like you can. BBC Science. I can't believe this is an actual article they worked out. But they said, I can't believe that my teacher might have been right. <laughs> they were really reaching. They're like, we had nothing to talk about. Could I survive just on different flavors of ice cream? The main ingredients are milk, cream, sugar, and egg. A plain vanilla has about 200 calories per 100 grams. So you would need a kilo a day to get enough. So that's not the concern. We have an, in my scenario, we have enough ice cream. Um, it would give you too much saturated fat and sugar. It would just increase a risk of heart disease and diabetes. So you may be able to survive. It's just not recommended. <gasps> and you can't survive forever. Sh yeah, but, but you could, <laughs> if you only had it, you could until live it off you, of it until it kills you until you can't. But you know, that other thing's going to kill you anyway. So might as well be ice cream, baby. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So what my main point of this is I'd love to Kimmy Madison. I'd love to find like where I am on my education level. It'd be embarrassing because I'm an idiot. 
And yeah, I know that's that. Not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm kind of I'm kind of a genius and an idiot at the same time. I don't know if anyone relates to that, but I'm the smartiest the smartiest. I'm the smartiest <laughs> idiot that's ever lived. Um, so I'd like to see what level I'm on. I think probably around fourth or fifth grade, I'd start having trouble Do with the answers. That's that's the thing though. Like with with I, I thought I was stupid throughout high school too because I would read the same the same uh, book that Michael Kobalerik would read. He'd read it like in, in like ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I'd read it. It took me like the whole class, and by the end of it, I had no idea what I read because mm-hmm. I couldn't comprehend or couldn't. It wouldn't stick with me. Right, you were trying to do it so fast. Yeah, yeah. Or but I just didn't care about the different mm-hmm. things. So I don't know. It's like a, there's other ways of learning. Well, my whole thing is. How far? How far could I make it? How f- could you think you could pass the fifth grade right now? Because that's that's where it's tricky when like the kids come home and like, hey, dad, mom, what what's the answer to this? And you look at it, you're like, oh, God, like I don't Common know. Core math. I yeah. don't think I could get it, and I think that's a third grade thing. So I would love to go back and be able to test myself and see how many grades I could pass. And how far I could get? Could Are I you teach in class myself? studying with all this? Or are you just taking I think tests? this is the problem. I think with school, like I think that we're so young when we're in school. I didn't really, I don't, I didn't really retain anything. Like there's a, maybe ten things. The way I have those ten memories of growing up is like the way I remember facts and things. I have a few, and if you bring them up, I'll be like, oh yeah, there was something too that I kind of remember that thing. But now I feel like I would excel. Yeah. Now's my time. Mm-hmm. Now ask me yeah. how many how many sides a um a pentagon is. Five. Reduce this fraction. Is that right? Pentagon? Uh-huh. Sides. Yeah, five. Boom. I know. Confidently. What is the uh what is the root uh, of, what is it, the root number of? Okay, ask me. <laughs> the root number of? 464. Okay, so root number, you'd multiply, you'd divide by, I don't know, Mark, and this is not a podcast where Either we just do, do math. <laughs> this is not a math podcast. We're trying to solve mysteries here. I'm not... Who needs roots? Anyways, I would have to go back to school to learn that, Mark. I'm sorry. I think we should do it. You triggered my math <laughs> trauma. I had to take college algebra three times. What, what at if you one knew point, it, I'd in, be afraid. At one point in my college, I was going to school for TV production, and you had to get like a C to pass. And at one point, I it was the only class I couldn't pass, and I had gotten all A's, and I was like having so much trouble that I went to the school. And was like, I think I have a problem, Mm -hmm. like a learning disability when it comes to math. And they had to just let me pass. They just had to be like, yeah, you're an idiot. And they had to be like, it's not your fault. Like, you're just stupid. And they had to be like, just go. It's not your fault. And they passed me. I had to get like a D plus or something. And they were like, if you could just knock it an F. In in Spanish. My one teacher Donnelly, he would leave, and we just go and put A's in the in his in his uh, Hell yeah. scoring. But then the next in uh, Spanish too, the teacher was like coming down hard on us, and it was too late. I couldn't go back and learn Spanish one to then do Spanish two, and I oh, fucking fuck, lost everything because he fucked up. Yeah, yeah. So my he got Spanish, caught cheating. My Spanish teacher used to go jerk off in his closet. <laughs> What did you hear? How do you figure this out? I don't know. When I went into Spanish class the first day, the students were like, oh, he he like jerks off in his closet. You'll see. I don't know how they knew already. Hmm. And because I started on the first day, it's not like I was coming in the middle of school, but they had already heard about him through like older siblings or people who had had him before. And they said, oh, he goes in the closet like a lot during class and he jerks off. And I remember I was sitting in class one day and I saw him. He kind of was sitting at his computer and he got up and he went into the closet and closed the door and he came out 10 minutes later a little sweaty. And I said in my head, he might have just came. <laughs> Wait, what grade was this? So- Actually, Correction. He might have venial. How do you say came in Spanish? How do you say came in Spanish? He might have vino. That's wine, but mm. I guess that's came. He might have vino. Mm-hmm. And he I think he did. So things were different in my school. Shit was fucked up over there. You got those real life experiences, though. I think that, you know, prepares you more than fractions. Yeah, my teacher... Mr. I don't know if I could say his name. Too late. Mr. Bleeper. 
Did that sound like I said something weird? Um, my teacher, Mr. Blank, said he was actually having a relationship with a student. And he had her on his mouse pad. And he was, what? Yeah, it was a picture of them together, and he had his arm around her, and it was his mouse pad. And he would have other students come in and give him shoulder massages. This was in high school, my junior year of high school. He would come in and give them other students. Other students would give them shoulder massages, like female students. Like, you know, it was junior year, and the seniors that had him last year would come in to visit because he was, like, the cool teacher. Mm. And they would rub his shoulders. And I was always like, this is a little strange. Like, a grown man shouldn't be getting a shoulder rub from a 17-year-old girl nope. or an 18-year-old girl. Yeah. Um, it does sound like the headline of a porn, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> teacher what's... gets massage from 18-year-old student. Who also happens to be his stepsister. Yeah. <laughs> and and I would play poker with him on the weekends. What? Yeah. Before I knew he was a pedophile, I thought he was just a fun poker player. Did he ever get busted? No. No. Well, yeah, he got busted years after. That's what we have. It a, came out coach. that that girl said she had been taken advantage of and she had lost her youth to the due to the power dynamic, which I don't disagree with. She was a child. He was an adult. But the fucked up part is he was such a cool teacher and so fun. And like teachers, I remember high school being so torturous that like when he got canceled for being a pedophile, I don't know why I'm doing this. He, um, we all stood up for him. We were like, no, he's the coolest. He lets us rub his shoulders. <laughs> like we were like really standing up for his ass. He was and, brainwashed. Yeah. And I remember me and a bunch of my girlfriends who were all like these hot, like 17, 18 year old high school girls. Like we would party on the weekends and like make out and send guys pictures of us making out for attention. Like we were bad and kind of like what you imagine, like bad kind of slutty 18 year olds are. Yeah. Fun. Sorry for being fun. Sorry for being awesome. Yeah, we were awesome. And we <laughs> defended him to the death because we were like, he never tried anything with us, which is kind of just an insult now at that point. Yeah. I'm like, why don't you want me if you wanted that bitch? <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. I'm kind of pissed. But we defended him with our life. It came out that he was getting fired. He was no longer. And this was during our senior year, and it happened during our junior year. And so I remember during our senior year, we all made shirts and wore them in solidarity of defending this man who was definitely assaulting a child. <laughs> um, and we all wore team blank shirts with his name, team his name shirts. They and so anything? it was just a bad look when he was like, I'm not messing with young girls. And all the 18 year old <laughs> girls in the school were wearing shirts like cropped, like we were cutting them. I remember we were putting like, we were, they were pink. We were making them cute. Like it couldn't have been a worse defense for this guy. When when we showed up in the school with the shirts supporting him, he must have just internally died. It's probably I thought I was defending him, but now I know that the universe just gives you what you need because we were actually making it worse in mm -hmm. hindsight. He's so, still in jail right now. He's still in jail, probably. So like you get two years, and then once you guys wore the shirts, they're like, make it twenty. Yeah. So who knows what the fuck was going on there? But I missed out on that. And my whole point of that is saying I'm doing a solo pod now, and now you, I want to talk about the political state of the economic society. Mm -hmm. And what am I supposed to say? I could survive off ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> That's why I want to keep Kimmy Madison myself. Let's I don't do know it. enough. I'm trying to read a Noam Chomsky book right now. It's been four weeks. I'm on page three. Like it's taking so long. I don't know. Understanding power. I didn't even know I'm reading. I'm opening Noam Chomsky. Understanding power. He goes, when this war happened, I said, what war? I look up the war. He says a country. I said, what's that country? I look up the country. He puts the continent. I said, I didn't even know that was the continent. I have to le relearn so far back that by the time I get to the actual war and the actual situation, I've retained so much information. I'm overwhelmed. How was this expected for me to keep when I was younger? How? That's a lot of pressure for someone who's eight and just wants to play Crash Bandicoot and play outside. What are we doing to these kids? Why did they? Why? Why? Do you want answers? Yeah. <laughs> what? No, no. I, I, I know oh. you're asking me. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kind of asking God mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I think it's a good idea. I think to go back and uh, and learn. Maybe there's probably a virtual course now. Yeah. Just vir like a virtual Kimmy Madison. Maybe there is. Maybe we should look one up. Yeah. Maybe we should look one up. All right, let's get into some stuff here. Um, I got some fun videos to pull up. Here we go. Let's see what we have. This is this is um I have a a fan. His name is Smoovin' the Cat. 
He's going to love that I'm saying this. There's this one fan. You know, there's there's people when I started comedy that would send me things and 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 really support. And this guy, Smooth into Cat, I would consider my number one fan. I would say he's been there since the very beginning. All the pods I've done, he's always in the comment section. He is also like, he floods my messages. Like if you look, there are thousands from him and me just liking every few. But I will say every message he sends, I watch and they're very good. He sends the best videos. So we're going to pull up some smooth in the cat vids that we got this week from him um, in this in this new segment I'm calling smooth in the cat. I love it. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> All right. Here we have an easy jet passenger caught in the act by the by an entire flight. I don't know, Mark, if you've ever tried to join the mile high or if that's in your realm. Um, but I, for one, would be nervous trying to bang on a flight. I'm not I'm not part of the club. I'm not part of the club either. I've I've it the the thought has crossed my mind. I think it's crossed anyone's mind who's flown with a partner. Um, but it just, it is already uncomfortable going in those bathrooms alone. Oh yeah. You feel like I don't want to, I don't want to be bouncing around on, first of all, I don't want to be moving a lot on the plane planes. I don't understand how they work. They don't seem every time I get in a plane, I see an ashtray in the bathroom. I go, how old is this bitch? (laughs) What? How, if I was getting on a, if I was getting in a, on the highway in a Chev, in a, in a 72 old cutlass. I don't even know if that's a real year of that car. And I was getting on the highway about to do 80 for my life. I'd be a little concerned. So when I get on a plane and it has an ashtray, it freaks me out a little. Yeah. Fucking sue me. Push in lighter. You ever get on a plane and it just takes off and there's just a, a sound that you don't normally hear on other planes and everyone's just casually listening to the rattle underneath the plane. It's like, it's sketchy, dude. The the, uh, the flight attendants don't even do the whole spiel at the beginning, which we don't necessarily need anyways, but they don't do it. So you're like, wait a second. Yeah, just, I'm like, this should be illegal. They're just like, good luck. <laughs> no, I need it. It's like a ritual to keep us up. You need to do the spiel. Um, so right now, EasyJet passengers, I don't even know what kind of airline EasyJet it is, but it does sound like an airline you'd fuck on. Mm-hmm. Um, so they if I'm fucking caught- on a plane, it's going to be an EasyJet. Uh, if I'm fucking, it's on an EasyJet. So let's see what's going on here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. They're kind of hyping him up. Oh, my God. He is really fucking. First of all, why would the flight attendant... Why would the flight attendant open the bathroom door so wide and expose these people like that? That seems like he knew everybody was going to see them fucking. I don't know why he's acting surprised. He did kind of expose them. Wow. Wow. I've never joined the Mile High Club, but those people, I wonder. Are, they, we, sure, are we sure this is a, a real jet and not like uh, one of the like the Hollywood prank jets, jets? For, uh, that people, these influencers use to show me, they're on a jet? I'm going to watch again. I'm going to watch the people's reactions. Give me one second. Bravo. The plane looks pretty real to me. Yeah, it does. And her, her storage. And the reactions look kind of real to me too. Usually those fake videos, the reactions are so fake that they're that you can tell. But that would be embarrassing. I wonder if they got on the no-fly list for that. Or based on EasyJet, probably got like extra miles. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, there is something going on with mosquitoes. Have you been feeling it lately in the air? Like being Eaten more? Yeah, there's there is something happened in mosquitoes. It seems like there is uh in my in my paranoid mind, it seems like there was a government drop of mosquitoes into California. There is uh, a special report right now from San Gabriel Valley, mosquito.org. Mm. <laughs> Real official website. Um because you guys have a, a lot of mosquitoes in Florida, right? Yeah. But then L.A., we really didn't have them for the last 20 years. I haven't felt mosquitoes since I moved here. I yeah. just got my first mosquito bite in California yesterday. What? And I saw online, let's see, this is the the TikTok. I get my best news source from TikTok. I'm sorry, I'm trying to look up official websites. And, and so TikTok L.A. County has confirmed its first death from West Nile virus this year. With this being the 19th confirmed case in the county this year, are you worried? 
Okay, that was a little quicker than I thought. He <laughs> he blew his mosquito load a little Sorry, early. So yeah, uh, LA County confirms first West Nile virus death of the year. Um, this marks the 19th confirmed case in the county this year. These Damn. mosquitoes are different too, they're saying. They're lighter in color, I noticed. They're really hard to kill. I had one in my apartment that was tearing me and my sister up last night and we tried to smash it four times. We smacked it against the couch, it flew away. We smacked it against the floor a few times, it flew away. They're very, very resistant to dying, which usually mosquitoes are very easy, or a quick smack and they're yeah, dead. Yeah. And this one was really hard. And these, these new ones in California, they bite you five times in a row. What? I thought so they die after they bite you. I don't. These are like super mosquitoes. My theory is they're trying to kill off the homeless people. Mm. There's too many homeless people outside. They don't know how to kill kill them. Give them all West Nile. Damn. What do you? I think? Wouldn't put it past you. That's Government. what I think. <laughs> wouldn't put it past. Wouldn't, you. wouldn't we? Wouldn't put it past you, old Govy. Yeah, because what, what's the alternative? Because they're like, are we going to spend money? No, bring in the mosquitoes. Yeah. No. Um. Didn't Bill Gates have stuff to do with mosquitoes? Someone said in the comments. Is that true? Did Bill Gates have something to do with mosquitoes? Bill Gates is part of a lot of questionable things. Really? Uh, in theory. I haven't done the research, but uh, the headlines suggest that. AP News says Bill Gates' tied mosquito project is not responsible for recent U.S. malaria cases. So they're saying it's not his fault, but who knows? Yeah, because they, they carry so many different things, right? That's what makes them... More difficult, but I've been I've been noticing. Jai, my girlfriend, she she gets eaten like daily. They, now they love her, but it never used to happen, right? And it, it never used to. But she used to work at this this place that like I don't know if it was like uh, I don't know if it was close to water or something. But it would they would she would get indoors. She would get eaten by mosquitoes like daily until she left. Um, but yeah, it's scary because they carry so much so many different things and uh, fuck your health up. It's saying that this is the worst mosquito invasion in Los Angeles that there's been. It's actually really crazy. I don't know what's going on with these mosquitoes, but they're drones. And to be the the number one mosquito like thing on on uh, California, it's not saying much because there never was <laughs> was any. Yeah, but that's true. But that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot still. All right. Well, hopefully we get rid of those soon and we don't get West Nile and die. Yeah. Should I bring some off in here? Yeah. Yeah, please. Fucking mosquitoes. Um, what do we have here? The mistake cost 16 skydivers their life. What the fuck? Maintain minimum separation. The pilot gave the signal to the jump master, and all of the jumpers were out of the plane within 30 seconds, starting their planned relative work maneuvers. Hmm. However, they immediately noticed the complete cloud cover below them. The limited light and semi-enclosed nature of the Bombay area where they were seated had made it difficult for them to see the conditions below. Okay, so they Their jumped plan out and was was to continue. First of all, men love to just talk in circles. <laughs> that was 30 seconds, and literally all he said is they jumped out and it was foggy. <laughs> I mean, the way that they will go around to say, anytime I had a meeting with a man, it's been a two-text. It could have been two-sentence text. Just drawn out. They're dressed up. They're pacing back and forth. Men think they're the wolf of Wall Street. It's fucking crazy out here. So it's foggy. Continue free falling. And we and we talk too much. Reaching around two thousand five hundred feet, at which point they would deploy their chutes or canopies over Ortner Airfield. The skydivers were unaware of what lie beneath the clouds. The Cessna attempted to locate them at. Can we play all of this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. After oh, the first so. 18 cool. jumpers. We could play cards and, and go back and forth, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Jumpers were in the air, thinking the bomber was in the same area. But neither the bomber nor the jumpers were there. They remained in free fall as they descended through the cloud layer, breaking out at around 4,000 feet. It wasn't until then that the skydivers made the alarming discovery. They were roughly four miles offshore <gasps> and nowhere close to the airfield. Their decisions in the next few seconds would ultimately determine whether they would. They're just doing shapes. <laughs> I like that they're they're like their decisions in the next seconds. Like I think they're doing a question mark. <laughs> they may be lost. <laughs> they're in the shape of SOS. <laughs> Live or die. There were only three and a half minutes left for them to prepare for impact and begin a fight for survival. All around them, skydivers started shedding boots, heavy clothing, and anything. No way that video just ends there. That's so annoying. 
I don't even know what happened in that entire video. I feel like that's one of the um, videos you'll watch in like fourth grade when they bring the yeah that was the a TV horrible. in. That was a fail. All right, you guys. This was uh, another episode of the Kim Congdon Takeover. You guys follow me on Instagram at Kim Congdon, on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon, uh, twitch.tv slash Queen Kong One, Kim uh, for show dates. Um, and what else am I missing? Come check me out. I'll be at Skank Fest um, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be at Skank Fest. It's going to be a great time. Uh, and, uh, check out my other podcast, this bitch with Sarah Weinshank. And, um, I think that's it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week, baby. Bye. Give me, give me content, taking over.